Welcome, race fans, to Delaware Speedway round number eight of the 2021 NASCAR Finney Series. Tonight, it's the Canadian Tire 125. Let's introduce you to the starting lineup. Starting 20th from Toronto, the RGC Sports Mark Dom Das Metal Chevrolet number two, TJ Renamato. Starting 19th from Toronto, the R Club Formula Car Thrills Dark Horse Trailers Dodge number 56, Malcolm Strong. Starting 18th from Lachine, Quebec, the Rona Viagra St. Hubert Cantorque 440 Chevrolet number 18, Alex Tagliani. Starting 17th from Calgary, Alberta. The Fast Eddie Speedwear TCB Trailer Chevrolet number three, Brett Taylor. Starting 16th from Toronto, the Curb Records Brock Street Brewing Company Chevrolet number 98, Sam Fellows. Starting 15th from Conewake, Quebec, the Bullies Truck Stop Chevrolet number 92, Dexter Stacy. Starting 14th from Terrebonne, Quebec, the Motosi Limite DLGL.com Castrol Canada Dodge number 52, Alex Gannett. On the inside of the seventh row from Boischatel, Quebec, the Teed Chevrolet XBN Chevrolet number 80, Donald Teed. Starting 12th from St. Leonard Daston, Quebec. The GM Paillet Chevrolet number 22, Mark Antoine Cameron. Starting 11th from Dorchester, Ontario, the North Country Property Maintenance Hub Chevrolet number 8, Shea Gemmel. Now, race fans, your top 10, starting 10th from Oakville, the O'Neill Electric Supply Milwaukee Tools LJR Racing Dodge number 84. Larry Jackson. Starting ninth from Trois-Rivières, Quebec, the WeatherTech Belmare Dodge, number 47, Louis Philippe L.P. Dumoulin. Starting eighth from London, Ontario, the APC Canusa Chevrolet, number seven, Pete Shepard III. To his inside, from Stainer, Ontario, the Tricor Transportation 12-Gauge Custom Chevrolet, number 19, Brandon Watson. Starting sixth, from Roxton, Pond, Quebec, the Miles for Migraine Canadian Super Sellers Dodge, number 51, Andrew Ranger. Starting fifth, from St. Eustache, Quebec, the bumper to bumper Lacroix tuning Dodge, number 74, Kevin Lacroix. Row two on the outside from Cambridge, Ontario, the Leland Industries RGC Sports NTN Chevrolet, number 64, J.R. Fitzpatrick. Starting third from Mount Bridges, Ontario, the TRS Components, Jar Excavating Ford, number 36. Cole Powell. Race fans, your front row. Starting second from St. Thomas, Ontario. The Castro Edge Spark Power Calf Cart Trucking Dodge, number 17, DJ Kennington. And your pole sitter from Grimsby, Ontario. The RGC Sports Quick Wick Chevrolet, number 20, Trayton Lapsovich. I'm Adam Ross. Joining me in the tower is Greg Callan. Pit side is Clinton Jeffrey. And in just a couple of minutes, Clinton, we are going to put you to work. You're going to put the crowd to work. He knows the drill. Greg Callan, great to have you here in the booth. Let's do about, uh, can we do about 16 seconds? 
Well, good to be here tonight at Delaware Speedway, and it's always been one of my favorite tracks to come and watch the NASCAR Penty Series over the years. Obviously, a, a short absence there, but uh, going to be a fantastic weekend tonight, the first of three races in total. How do the teams manage all this? I, I think for the drivers, you know, it's going to cross your mind. You want to save your equipment. For the team owners, yeah, they're nervous. You know, if I'm at Hackinson Racing, I've got the 3, I've got the 8, I've got the 92 out on the racetrack. That's a lot of inventory on the track. A lot of these teams have backup cars, but do they have backup cars for all of the equipment that, that they're running? I doubt it. So, yeah, it's a, it's a stressful night for sure. 30 seconds, 30 seconds the Drivers buckled up down trackside, getting ready to give the command here in just a moment. Half a mile around Delaware Speedway, and it is a fast track. The big story for me, Alex Tagliani comes into this event with an excellent points lead, the kind of lead you would love to come into this part of the season with. He qualified 18th out of 20. That is not where you want to be. No, that puts you back in the hornet's nest, especially in the opening laps. So he'll look to move that uh, Rona number 18 towards the front early on here. Clinton, Jeffrey, let's put you to work. Make the fans do the work. Let's get this rolling. Well, race fans, you saw some amazing action already. You ready to see the NASCAR Pinty Series fired up? Let's hear you. All right, we need your help. Three, two, one. Drivers, start your engines. Ah. <sighs> 20 cars strong. Uh, car counts are on their way back up, Greg. Some exciting things. If, if you're a racing fan in Canada, and I know I say it a lot, especially in this part of the country, there is a lot to be excited about. There is not a single car in this field without names on the quarter panel. And I've, I've been calling races for a lot of seasons. You've seen a lot of these races. There's always been a few cars that come out and they're just, you know, having a good time. Nothing on the race car, maybe a mom and pop business. Every one of these teams has quality sponsorship. And uh, they've gone from just trying to make the race and, and start the race just to start the race. But now these drivers are out there competing. And you go throughout the field and you've got so much talent from 1st to 20th right now, like you said, with Alex Tagliani right there back in 18th. Uh, it's anyone's race here tonight. And you've also got the, the old, steady, well, I shouldn't say old, but <laughs> McCall Racing puts out a lot of good race cars. But you've got White Motorsports and David White putting out really good race cars as well. You've got LP Dumoulin and the Dumoulin Competition Racing Team. They're building their cars in-house. So it's a lot of fun when you get that parity, you get that competition. And how exciting is it that Andrew Ranger gave Rick Ware his first NASCAR victory last race out at Flamborough Speedway. Yeah, big win down to Flamborough there a uh, couple of weeks ago. And Andrew Ranger, just it's, it's hard to get used to him, though, in that 51 machine. It's going to take some time. It's a different look, but it's a beautiful race car. Yeah. I love how it looks. Alice Gannett stopped a couple of times along pit road in that 52 machine, but it looks like everybody has fired and are on their way. Again, we have to keep an eye on Alex Tagliani in the 18 as I look at the point standings entering tonight. I've got far too many windows open on my computer, Greg. But that's okay. <laughs> One of them has the information I need. 288 points for Alex Tagliani after seven races. 11 points back is LP Dumoulin. 36 points back is Andrew Ranger. 43 points back are both DJ Kennington and Trayton Lapsovich. 44 points back are both Kevin Lacroix and Alex Gannett. We have three races this weekend. That is almost a third of the entire race schedule. It was just a 10 race series this year. That can shift so very much. Four drivers within one point. That could be the battle for the lead come Sunday in the final race. Well, I was thinking that uh, with DJ Kennington especially, this is a track that's been so good to him over the years. He's so good here at Delaware Speedway, closest to home for him. And look, at, uh, he puts it up there 
on the outside of the front row with Trayton Lapsovich. They're tied coming into this one, so this is a chance for them with Alex Tagliani starting at the back and uh, Andrew Ranger a little bit farther back for them to gain ground here tonight. And uh, DJ must just love thinking, oh, I got three in a row here at Delaware. Uh, you know, he does, and, and he goes, he's gone through some dry spells in his career, but this is a place where he feels right at home. He knows this place like the back of his hand. He's got a lot of speed. He showed it in qualifying. There he is up in the front row. But look at the drivers right behind them. Cole Powell and J.R. Fitzpatrick. Points? What points? We don't care. Yeah, Cole Powell comes into this, laid down a very quick lap. Comes into this one third. And then uh, J.R. Fitzpatrick fills in for Mark Dilley in that number 64. Seems strange to see J.R piloting that car that's been uh, traditionally Mark Dilley for years. And a black 84 driven yeah. by Larry Jackson, <laughs> 84 being J.R. Fitzpatrick's number. We spent a good bit of time there focused on Alex Tagliani in the 18. The crowd is packed here at Delaware Speedway. A great crowd on hand, a beautiful night for racing. It is time to go for the Canadian Tire 125. Trayton Lapsovich in the 20, he is a teenager. DJ Kennington in the Castro Edge 17. He is not a teenager. <laughs> they make up your front row. The pace car peels off. Good start for Trayton Lapsovich. DJ Kennington quickly getting to the bottom of the racetrack. Down the back stretch they go for the first time and Lapsovich in control over Kennington. Then you've got Powell side by side now with J.R. Fitzpatrick coming down to complete lap number one. Clean start. Everyone made it through that opening lap deeper in the field. I'm, I'm going to have one eye on Alex Tagliani as he works around the three of Brett Taylor. The 98 is Sam Fellows. A long way back from that battle for the lead that sees Trayton Lapsovich holding on to the spot over DJ Kennington, they're almost three wide for third. Yeah, Andrew Ranger's been making some moves here in these first couple of laps as he's right there behind the 36 of Cole Powell as they work off the banking in corner number two, down the back stretch and head down into three. JR, oh, trouble, trouble going into three. Oh, Tagliani, he got it sideways. Alex Tagliani able to get slowed up to avoid all that Dexter Stacy gets rolling once again I think Donald Teej is over there Alex Gannett in the 52 is over there and I think it all started with Shea Gemmel in that number eight yeah quite the pile up down there in corners three and four puts us under the first caution flag of the event and I didn't notice Mark Antoine Cameron. He's got plenty of damage on that GM Pie number 22 as we have a look at that mm -hmm. replay. And, wow. That is crystal clear images down there in the corner. So Mark Antoine Cameron with some damage to the hood of that number 22 machine. He will have to come down to Randy Stackley and the rest of the crew, although getting great exposure for GM Pie. <laughs> And we'll see what they do with this body work. It's uh, flapping around there for the 22 machine. So we'll come to the attention of the pit crews here. Ooh, and Mark Antoine Cameron in the 22. He is laying fluid down all the way around the racetrack. Yeesh. Not good. You can see the trail of fluid. Yeah. So that could be oil cooler. It could be the radiator. So he's pulled off onto pit road now. So they've got two jobs. They're going to have to secure the bodywork. Well, I believe you'll see them rip the hood off first and then try to decide what they can do with the front fenders on that 22. And then someone else or a team of someone else's has to look at where the fluid is coming out from. Clinton Jeffrey is down on the scene. They are saying kill the engine. Yeah, they've shut it off here, Adam, and they go to look under the hood. They don't barely even have to lift the pins to get the hood off this one. As big problems for Mark Antoine Cameron here in the 22 car. This is going to be a long repair, guys. And it's a long weekend as well. Remember, this is race one of three on the weekend. They have 
tomorrow off, Greg. So yeah. so most of these teams are close enough to home. The 22 racing team out of Milverton, Ontario, they'll take that car back and they'll be hard at work tomorrow. Yeah, I was about to say, at least they've got that day off in between to prepare for the double header on Sunday afternoon. Now, this might be nothing, but the right front brake rotor on Trayton Lapsovich is still glowing red well into this yellow flag. Now, I don't know if he's trying to keep heat in the brakes, but I don't see why it would still be glowing cherry red. Yeah, that bright. And they've been under caution for a number of laps here. So, so there, there is brake technology where they have to be very hot to be effective. But it surprises Still. me that the right front, and he's he's accelerating and hitting the brakes, so it, I wonder if they've got a sticky right front brake caliber. Clinton Jeffrey, if, if you're able to get to the 20 pit, ask them about that glowing right front brake rotor. The concern is the right front is glowing, the left front is not. You yeah. should generate about the same amount of heat in both front brakes, unless I'm wrong, <laughs> which has happened before. Watch him there. There's a good shot of that where he's speeding up, jamming on the brakes up and down. The car settles up and then settles back down. And so you have to wonder. And there goes the speedy dry around the track. Hey guys, I'm down here with the Lapsovich crew. Uh, Jeff Lapsovich just looked up on the box and said, hey, is it sticking? And they said yes. And there was a bit of frustration there. So they, they do know they have some brake issues. Crew's talking about it right now. We'll try and get in there in just a moment. Well, Clinton, it is unstuck now because the glow has stopped. So yep. either he's out of right front brake pad <laughs> or hammering up. So the brakes, it's just... I don't know how to explain how a brake releases. I got Jeff here, Jeff. The guys are talking about the right front brake is glowing. Now it's not glowing. Is it released? Do you know you got a problem? What's the situation on the right front brake rotor? No, no, we're, we're okay. Uh, he was just going and stopping, heat, getting the heat in the tires rather than swerving the left and right. Uh, we're, we're fine. There's no problem there. No issue from, from Lapsovich crew. At least that's what that Jeff says, guys. That sounded exciting, Adam. I think he's being a politician. <laughs> But to your point, they for it were to only frustrated a minute ago, so that there's definitely something going on. I would say. Yeah, you'll, you'll racers are very savvy. They don't they don't want to talk to you because other people are also listening to you. So you don't want to you don't want to tip your hat. But in a 125 lap race, see, we've run 300 lap races here at Delaware Speedway, and the braking systems hold up to it. So 125 laps is relatively a sprint race, unless your right front brake caliper won't release. And to your point, I think our concern was that it wasn't an even glow. Yeah, it was just the right front, and, and uh, you would traditionally think it would be both. But we'll see. It will, if there is an issue, it will work itself out, or we'll at least see it progress. Yeah, and you'll see, you should see it right away on the restart when the car goes into the turn. Uh, if a brake hangs up on the car, the car will not want to turn. It'll want to push up the racetrack because the suspension doesn't move freely when the brakes are on. There's, there's a natural bind. So DJ Kennington will be the first to know if there's a problem because this 20 car <laughs> is going to push up into his lane. DJ with a good start immediately dropped to the bottom of the racetrack ahead of Cole Powell in the 36, the 64 of J.R. Fitzpatrick and Andrew Ranger rounding out the top five in the miles for migraine number 51. One to go, the lights will go out on the pace car and the field will double up. So all of these cars at the front are prepared out of different stables. The 20 comes out of the 22 racing stable of Scott Stackley. DJ Kennington, of course, prepares the 17. The 36 is out of Dave Jacobs. The 64 is out of Dave White. The 51 is Rick Ware Racing. That's pretty impressive because over, over history, if a team has something figured out, usually all of their cars at run that pretty well. Yeah, so... Amongst the five, lots of parity right now as we come back to the green flag to complete lap number 12 here in the Canadian Tire 125. 
that launched for Trayton Lapsovic, also for Cole Powell in the 36, does not want to let DJ Kennington down the way he did the first time, but DJ Kennington had other plans. He launches out, gets a great start on the outside, leads the way into turn three. Yeah, that was a flexing of the muscle, and then Trayton Lapsovic gets all sorts of sideways and will lose ground and bottle up everyone behind him. The car shot up the racetrack. Almost like there was a problem with the brakes. <laughs> I think Cole Powell might have just braked at J.R. Fitzpatrick. Things are getting hairy right now from fifth on back as they're door to door. Powell with a handful now off of corner number four in that black and yellow number 36. Oh, Alex Gannett goes three wide up the middle. A little bit of a pinball move between the 98 of Sam Fellows, the 56 of Malcolm Strawn. Again, Alex Tagliani is behind all of this nonsense going down into turn three. Out in front right now, it's all DJ Kennington. There you see the battle between the 20, uh, Trayton Lapsovich and Andrew Ranger in the 51. That's for second spot. Out in front is DJ Kennington by a mile. Hanging on to that fourth spot, Brandon Watson in the black number 19. It's only his second race in the NASCAR Pinty Series, but he looks right at home out there behind the wheel. Of course, his first race, he drove the 64 Leland machine, which is two spots behind him right now. He's about to feel the pressure from Cole Powell down to the inside and corners three and four. Powell on the bottom, Brandon Watson on the outside across the line. They come It's 17 on the board so far. Now, when I thought Powell might have break checked someone in one and two, that someone was the 64 J.R. Fitzpatrick. So let's see if they close in. If that was the case, I expect J.R. Fitzpatrick to be swift about retaliating. Well, he was pretty steady going deep into that corner with Cole Powell. Didn't let off by any means. So we'll keep an eye right now as Powell trails at number 19 of Brandon Watson. And it might not have been a brake check. It might have been Cole Powell having to stabilize the car and, and lift for a second. As Powell works to the inside of Brandon Watson off of four. They're drawing away slightly from the 64 J.R. Fitzpatrick. So at this point, DJ Kennington out in front. He'll come by to complete lap number 20 this time across the stripe over Trayton Lapsovich and Andrew Ranger. But then there's that battle again with Watson and the 36 of Powell now to the inside in corner number one gets a good run. Yeah, Powell got a good run off of turn number four. Great position in one and two, although Brandon Watson holding him. Did I have the names mixed up there? Powell getting a great run, getting the advantage of Brandon Watson now here comes J.R. Fitzpatrick looking to get to the inside as well. Yeah, he saw the door open not able to get there and stick the nose in So Brandon Watson will hold the spot for the moment right now. That's the battle for the fifth position as you see Watson get all sorts of sideways off of corner number two. These cars are a handful that is for sure as DJ Kennington continues to lead the way. Trayton Lapsovich runs in second in that number 20. We are 22 laps in to the Canadian Tire 125. Andy Ranger running third already, running a different line than just about everybody else. You'll watch Ranger come off the corner. He takes a wider arc. He is almost always the first car to find an alternative racing group around any racetrack. You saw the eighth there of Shea Gemmel, who's following Teej right now in the 80 machine, and uh, he's trying to work his way back through the field. Remember, he was involved in that first caution flag, had a little bit of damage to that number eight uh, north side country number eight there you see him and uh, he is trying to get by Donald Teach right now for 12. With his nose to the inside of Teach and that number eight and I've got to believe Teach would be a little bit frustrated I think he would have wanted more speed for his return to the cockpit a little bit off the pace racing deeper in the field than he would have liked but Alex Gannett just ahead of them makes a move to the inside of Larry Jackson Shea Gemmel to the inside of Donald Teach. Gannett will pick up the spot past Jackson into the top 10, put the 52 machine. As there are 100 laps left to go here in the Canadian Tire 125 at Delaware Speedway. Creighton Lapsovich is closing the gap on race leader DJ Kennington. Kennington closing in on slower traffic. But Lapsovich is slowly reeling in that 17 machine as he drives away from the 51 of Andrew Ranger. Lap traffic for DJ Kennington. The leader works it off at corner number four. Goes to the outside. Marina Motto number two to put him a lap down. 
Malcolm Strong directly in front of him. Again, Malcolm Strong, the road racer from Toronto, cutting his teeth on the oval tracks. Chose Flamborough Speedway and Delaware Speedway to do that. They're two pretty tough oval tracks as ovals go. So Kennington gets around the two slower cars. Whoa, Drake Lawson is trying to get to the inside of Renamato. Renamato comes off the corner low, and both of them get sideways off of turn two. That was almost a whole lot of trouble for Trayton Lapsovich. He'll clear, and as Andrew Ranger chasing him down now for that second spot. DJ Kennington, the leader now, has a bit of breathing room. Yeah, Kennington just picked up all that ground that Lapsovich had closed in. Kennington just gained it back. So it's back to about a half a straightaway lead for DJ Kennington over the 20 of Trayton Lapsovich further back. Larry Jackson is falling through the field. He's gotten overtake, been overtaken by the 80 of Donald Teeves, the three of Brett Taylor, and now right behind Larry Jackson is Alex Tagliani in the 18 and the 92 of Dexter Stacy. So again, Alex Tagliani, the point leader coming into tonight. He runs in the 15th position. So he's got a lot of work to do right now when you consider drivers like Lapsovich and Kennington are, and Ranger are all right up there at the front. He'll get the most out of that 18 machine. You can guarantee that. We look through the field, a great battle for the eighth spot. LP Dumoulin has the position in the 47. Pete Shepard in that number seven looking for it. Shepard had a good run at Flamborough Speedway, but they had to go to a backup car. He spun. This is the car he spun out in practice and clobbered the wall with at the very start of the practice session. So Mike McCall is done a rebuild on that race car he's had a lot of work to do to get it into race shape and boy oh boy things are closing in as the lead lap cars go around Malcolm Strawn in the 56 and we're seeing a lot of glowing brake rotors see some body damage on the APC number seven of Pete Shepard the third the right front flapping in the breeze there as he's tucked up behind Dumoulin working off a of corner number two another time right up behind that 47 as they close in on the 64 J.R. Fitzpatrick so very soon this could be a four or five car battle Brandon Watson runs by himself in the fifth position but Kevin Lacroix on the 74 closing the gap trying to close the gap he's got J.R. Fitzpatrick right behind him Kevin Lacroix came to the NASCAR Binti series lightning quick but he came at a time when J.R. Fitzpatrick was just leaving the series and I think the rivalry they would have had would have been epic as they crossed the country. So we get to see a little bit of that here tonight. Here's the battle that's heating up right now. It's the battle between Ranger and Powell. That's a fight for the third position. Powell's been tracking down Ranger at the last few laps, and Emma's right there in the back bumper, the number 51. So the top four all on the same straightaway. Trayton Lapsovich again closing the gap. It's a little bit less than half a straightaway between Kennington and Lapsovich. The same distance again back to Andrew Ranger, but he's got Cole Powell breathing down his neck going through one and two. 87 laps left to settle this one here. The Canadian Tire 125 from Delaware Speedway for the NASCAR Pinty Series. There's Ranger, there's Powell right now, third and fourth as they put another lap down on this one as we get into those laps right now that are getting clicked off the board. These are the laps the drivers kind of settle in before the storm gets crazy in the second half. You're exactly right. I mean, they're putting in laps, they're trying to position themselves. Here goes Paul Powell to the inside of Andrew Ranger. Ranger gets a better run down the straightaway. And look at this pack of cars bearing down on Sam Fellows in the 98. Fellows is a lot down, but right behind him is Brandon Watson, Kevin Lacroix, J.R. Fitzpatrick. I mean, that is some of the best young talent this country has to offer. Five cars all right there trying to get by the 98 machine. And here's the battle. Powell, Powell down to the inside of Rangers. They work it off at corner number two another time. Powell just doesn't quite have what he needs to get the run on that 51 machine. A little further back, Pete Shepard just picked up the eighth spot from LP Dumlin, drove to the inside in one and two, was able to clear him coming off of that second turn. 
Cole Powell and Andrew Ranger both have the brakes glowing red in that battle for the third spot. They're losing ground to the race leaders as their battle intensifies. Powell's been putting the pressure on, and I'm sure Andrew's been watching that rear view mirror right now as Powell is as close as he can be to that left rear quarter panel right there. He goes down to the inside of Ranger now. Will this be the run he needs off a of corner two? Up the hill at turn number two, down the hill. That's the back straightaway. They drive into three and four. Cole Powell up to the driver's door of Andrew Ranger in the 51, but Ranger again comes off of turn number four with a big head of steam. Here he comes, rolls it nicely through corner one and gets a good run. And this time I think Ranger might have decided, you know what, go on by. Ranger got a little bit loose. You can see that on the screen. And now that he's back in the fourth spot, you can see he's sizing up the line that Cole Powell's running. Andrew Ranger is not one who will give you a lot of feedback on the setup of the race car. He won't give you a lot of tools. What he will do is drive the heck out of a race car. I mean, he is as naturally gifted a race car driver as we have ever seen in the NASCAR Penny Series. So right now, Cole Powell holds down the third spot. He'll set his sights on first and second. It's DJ Kennington out in front, but I'll tell you what, the gap between he and Trayton Lapsovich seems to have closed a little. It absolutely has. And here's a big story. Alex Tagliani has gone a lap down. Right now, he is in the free pass position, so if a yellow were to come out, he would get his lap back. But as soon as DJ Kennington closes in and passes with the next lead lap car, that takes Tagliani out of the free pass position. Malcolm Strong doesn't count. He was already a lap down, but if DJ can get around either Larry Jackson or Donald Teach, and DJ knows this, there's no better quarterback behind the wheel than DJ Kennington. He is in a hustle to catch up to the next car on the lead lap and put them a lap down. Well, we just saw a shot of that right front of Pete Shepard the third. Remember, it was flapping in the wind. Well, it's done flapped over. It's the uh, right front fender now is leaning up on the door panel. Still attached, so I believe they're going to allow him to continue on. Usually they will. They won't post a car unless it poses a real danger. These are fiberglass bodies anyhow. They're, they're, it's not going to slow them down much in the least, Greg. Looks like we're about to approach lap number 50 here in the Canadian Tire 125. DJ Kennington leads Trayton Lapsovich, Cole Powell, Andrew Ranger, and Kevin Lacroix up to the fifth spot. Now Kennington has gotten around Larry Jackson in the 84, so put another car a lap down. That's Jackson running in the 15th spot. If they complete this lap, that puts Jackson in the free pass position. And now there's a couple more cars. So what, what DJ Kennington now really wants, anybody who's trying to close in on points to Tag Vianney, they want a yellow flag to stop lapping cars because it's going to pin Tag Vianney a lap down outside the top 15 and make it very, very difficult for him to get back into the top 15 at any point in this race. Here you see Pete Shepard III trailing J.R. Fitzpatrick. Get Dumoulin and Gemmel riding around behind him right now. Now, Larry Jackson understands the importance of the free pass position. He drives to the outside of Donald Teach to pick up that spot. So that'll put Larry Jackson into 14th. So if the yellow comes out right now, he would be the driver to get the free pass back to the lead lap. Watching Shea Gemmel there for a moment. He's worked his way back up to 10th. So he's got a fast car here this evening after being part of that first caution flag. It has not slowed him down. I thought maybe the damage to the left rear of that car would cause problems with Shea Gemmel silently uh, marching his way to the top 10. He's definitely got a good race car. He's got some speed underneath him as the laps continue to click away. 55 laps down, just 70 laps to go. DJ Kennington setting a torrid pace in his Castro Edge Dodge. There we see J.R. Fitzpatrick, Pete Shepard the third. The battle for the seventh spot. J.R. got the call from Mark Dilley to Get behind the wheel to Leland number 64, and here he is trailing Brandon Watson in the number 19. DJ Kennington has put Brett Taylor a lap down in that number three machine. Brett Taylor running in the 13th spot. 
Cannington and Lapsovich one and two and uh, Lapsovich is right there. He's about three or four car lengths off the back bumper of the Castrol Edge Dodge. As they put another lap on the board, 58 complete now. He closes that gap on the race leader. Third place is the 36 of Cole Powell. He's in a different zip code. A full straightaway behind the race leaders, Kennington and Lapsovich. Yeah, Cole was never really able to get away from Andrew Ranger. Now he gets bottled up behind Alex Degliani. That slows him up and puts Ranger right back on his rear bumper. Ranger looking at the racing room to get around. Meanwhile, we shift our focus back to this battle for the lead. Kennington's got the top spot, but just four car lanes back is Trayton Lapsovich, the youngster from Grimsby, Ontario. He's closed it, and he's, well, we got one around right in front of DJ Kennington. Trayton Lapsovich scooted by on the inside. This will be interesting to score. I've witnessed this before. We were in Edmonton. So, every lap counts. The, the, the timing and scoring does not stop when the yellow flag flies. When it happened in Edmonton, Donald Teague was leading the race. I believe LP Dumoulin was second. Teague had to go up the racetrack to avoid an accident. LP Dumoulin stayed in the racing line. Let's have a quick look at this replay. The leaders go down into one and two. And Kennington does a great job, goes up to the outside out of the groove. It is exactly what happened years ago in Edmonton. They took the lead away from Donald Teague that day gave the lead to L.P. Dumoulin. Dumoulin went on to win. Teach was furious. But according to NASCAR rulebook, you have to maintain a caution speed. And you have to stay on the racing line, even when the yellow comes out. We'll see how they choose to officiate this. To call it, like it's a carbon copy situation, which whether you agree with it or not, and I happen to not necessarily agree with it, because I don't think you should ever be penalized for avoiding an accident. But it, but it is exactly what we saw before. And we'll watch the replay here. Down into the corner, Kennington goes way off the racing line. Trayton stays on the racing line. They both avoided the crash. Yep. That's what you want your drivers to do. We'll see what the officials decide to do with the race order. The benefit for Trayton Lapsovich being in second, he had time to react and realize, well, I can roll the bottom. And DJ didn't have that. He had to make that split second decision. Do I go low and risk hitting Dexter Stacy or do I take the path up the high side? Well, Dexter ended up rolling up there. So unfortunately for DJ Kennington, not having as much time to react as Trayton Lapsovich. It looks like Kennington has been given his spot out in front. And, and I don't disagree with that, Greg. It's just the way you see the, the rules and the procedures enforced at different events and we've seen some bizarre things over the years. So 62 laps completed in this one. There's the Castrol Edge Dodge out in front, DJ Kennington. So he's not going to race his way back onto the lead lap. And he's got other cars a lap down that he has to contend with. Well, Adam, he stopped short of the box. They had to push him in a little bit further. Now they go to work on the right side here, this Rota Viagra machine. They did have the air pressure gauge in hand, and they're going around to that right side. We can't quite get over the wall to see what's going on just yet. Maybe you'll have to let us know. Yeah, adjustments being made to the right rear now. And ask our official has gone out there to oversee that. NASCAR official overseeing some work being done on the seven of Pete Shepard. Both drivers down off the jacks and will carry on back onto the racetrack without losing a lap. Pete getting some work done on that right front fender that was flapped over onto the door panel and they've got that tape back down. We'll see how good that tape is. How many laps? I think he'll be all right. Well, there. I've preached on this for the series for years and years and years. I love these race cars. There, there is no aero push. You can knock a fender off the car and still be as quick as you were before. So 
that's a great thing. It's something I think is amazing with the NASCAR Penny Series. I think this is the only series that runs this body. But I like it. One to go. So Brett Taylor will pass the pace car. He will get his free pass to rejoin the tail end of the field on the lead lap. Interested to see what Cole Powell can do here on this restart. I thought once he got by Andrew Ranger, he was going to track down the top two, but really he didn't get much further away from Ranger and kind of lost some ground, I think, to the top two. So this is his chance now to regroup and see what he's got for those top two. It's possible that was gamesmanship and Cole Powell knowing he wouldn't be able to catch them. So don't abuse the car and wait for a yellow. So we're going to find out, but DJ Kennington multi-time series champion multi-time race winner brings him back up to speed in the castro edge 17 and leads the way down into turn one he's got the advantage on that inside line and here comes cole powell as he'll climb to the door of Trayton lapsovich lapsovich will clear him halfway down the back stretch lapsovich really made a nice turn two there to get an awesome launch and maintain that second spot he'll try to track down dj kennington further back it is a hornet activity as they're three wide down into turn number one Dexter Stacy on the inside yeah Brandon Watson's got a handful he had a good solid run going and now he's plummeting through the field as he gets passed now by Dexter Stacy in the 92 so maybe something wrong in that number 19 quite possible we'll keep an eye on Brandon Watson's number 19 as he drops back meanwhile at the front Continues to be DJ Kennington with pressure being applied by Drayton Lapsovich in the 20. They've got a couple of car lengths over the 36 of Cole Powell. Ranger right behind Powell. Kevin Lacroix up there in the top five as well. J.R. Fitzpatrick hanging around outside of the top five. Yeah, Fitzpatrick in the 64. We just heard the officials saying watch it 64. So we must have been getting a little bit hot and bothered there with somebody as Drayton Lapsovich looks to the inside of Kennington. This is a battle for the lead. The sparks fly as he dives down deep into corner number one. They're door to door halfway down the back stretch, headed into corner number two. He will. Drayton Lapsovich out in front of the number 20. We've seen this before. He's not been able to hang on for victory, but. One of these days, Greg, one of these days is going to be the one for Drayton Lasovich, and he is out in front with Kennington second in the 17, Cole Powell still third in the 36. You get a feeling with Drayton Lasovich, if he could pick up one of these big wins here in Canadian motorsports, that it could just start the uh, downpour. Race leader Trayton Lapsovich in that number 19. Big problems for the 19 machine. So it's Lapsovich, Kennington, and then put a four or five car length advantage back to Cole Powell in the third spot, who's got Andrew Ranger in his rear view mirror, and then a couple of car lengths back to Kevin Lacroix in fifth. Andrew Ranger is tenacious. I mean, he just keeps looking for different ways to make that car go fast, and once he does, he's going to be all over as he looks to the inside of Cole Powell. Powell moves down the racetrack to block the move. Ranger gives him a bit of a shove through three and four. Oh, what a round up in corner number two right in front of the leaders. That is Brandon Watson as Cole Powell. Oh, Kevin Lacroix gets tagged from behind J.R. Fitzpatrick. And look at Pete Shepard III's car. The whole front end crumpled up on the APC. Number seven. I'm pretty sure Shepard didn't get woed up as quick as the rest, including J.R. Fitzpatrick in that 64 machine. Caused Fitzpatrick to go around and cause the front end of the Pete Shepard number seven to be extremely redesigned down there as he heads straight down pit road to the attention of his crew. Well, the duct tape did its job until that collision, and we'll have a look at it. So down into the corner, you see Ranger and Powell get into it. And okay, yeah, of course, Brandon Watson was spun out. My memory's great, Greg. It just doesn't work for that long. <laughs> and in the chain reaction that ensued, 
lots of damage. You see Pete Shepard Jr., uh, Pete's father, standing by the window gun. I'm not sure what we need to do. And there's Brandon Watson pulling off the track and onto pit road, and we documented there's the right rear down on that tricor number 19. And from the drop of the green flag on that last restart, Brandon was just sailing backwards and then uh, got caught by the leaders, ended up spinning, and the tire's already down there. So you have to think that's what the problem was for Brandon Watson. That could have been a whole lot worse. If they try to get that 19 car a little bit higher in the air, it's going to be tough to get him out before the pace car, but I think they might be seeing more problems than they anticipated up in the wheel well of that tricore number 19. Tough break because he was running up the top five early on in this one and holding his own. I believe that's David White in the background, if I'm not mistaken, the builder of these race cars. Overseeing what's going on. Alex Gannett in the 52 headed down pit road. So was Alex Tagliani. All Alex's to pit road, please. Having a look at the front end of Gannett's 52. They're putting tape on or taking, taking tape, tape off. off by the looks of it. Well, guys, here's the tire that's all messed up off the machine of Watson. Tire smoking pretty bad here. Hey, Clint, touch it. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. They've got some other issues here on the right rear. As you guys can tell, they're going to work on it. He's trying to figure out what the problem is. White has walked away. And we'll keep watching and keep working on this one. Yeah, I'm curious what they could be working on there and the track bar, track bar mount. Like they're looking at the front of the right rear wheel well. Dexter Stacy gonna get his lap back in that number 92. So a number of drivers who are one lap down. Alex Tagliani has yet to be at the front of that line. And in fact, he, he might have lost the lap on pit road there. He was Another there. lap. He was there for a while. I, I was just wondering if he went a lap down. Brandon Watson pulls away and tries to yeah, at least get, save a lap. They get the Watson car pushed out. There is some fluid leaking here in the pit stall. And Jack, if you can see it there on pit road, they've got a big puddle in what I can only assume is brake fluid out of the right rear of that car. We'll try and get in a word with David White if we get a chance, guys. So those problems would be unrelated unless that flat tire ripped out the right rear brake line like with rubber yeah. flopping around. So Trayton Latsovich continuing to lead the way in this number 20, DJ Kennington. Don't count out the Wiley veteran DJ Kennington in the Castrol Edge 17. Again, coming into tonight, the points were led by Alex Tagliani. He had an 11 point lead over LP Dumoulin. Dumoulin's not having that great a night either. Third and fourth are Ranger, DJ Kennington, Trayton Lapsovich. I think it's going to be much tighter when all is said and done. Clinton, what's up? Well, we're down here watching the action as uh, the Pete Shepard car has just been taken back to the pit area. It is pushed behind the wall. There's all kinds of issues here. If you look at this tire, Jack, I want you to aim in it. A nice cut, two big cuts in the tire, but it did take out the brake line, guys. There's brake fluid all over that tire, and we'll go back and follow the Shepard situation. Clinton Jeffrey on the scene in the pits. We're about to go back to green. Trayton Lapsovich on the inside and the 20. DJ Kennington on the outside and the 17. Back under the green flag, Lapsovich. Trying to pull away from DJ Kennington at another time. Is feeling the pressure now from Cole Powell. Kennington will clear him going into corner number three and put Ranger and Powell door to door. Those two have been together most of this race. Yeah, they're well acquainted with each other. How about Jake Gemmel in that number eight after the early race problems, Greg, you talked about it. He's up there side by side, racing for the fifth spot with Kevin Lacroix. Yeah, he's right there. Now he's going to have some problems. He's got Dumal and down to his inside going into corner number three, kind of hung on the outside line, not where you want to be. 
No, that's for sure. A little bit of contact sends him up the racetrack. He'll try to get back in line ahead of Alice Gannett. And Gannett going to be the wiser. He backs out just a little bit into one, but then rolls through the center and gets to the inside of Gemmel. So Alex Gannett in the 52. He's been down on pit road tonight, having a good comeback. DJ Kennington keeping pace with the youngster. Trayton Lapsovich is the top two break away. And you talk about the point situation, Adam. I think everything's setting up for quite the perfect day on Sunday. You couldn't ask for a title points battle, a tighter points battle than what we might see on Sunday if things play out the way they are right now. There's a lot of racing still to go, but you're absolutely right, Greg, with a couple of drivers running first and second. They both led a bunch of laps. They're both tied coming into this race, 43 points behind points leader Alex Tagliani, who's still marred at the back of this field. Off of corner number four, they come another time. This time that'll be 37 laps left to go here in the Canadian Tire, 125. Lapsovich, Kennington, then it's Cole Powell doing a nice job holding on to that third spot. Ranger running fourth and Kevin Lacroix in fifth. Alex Gannett just beat J.R. Fitzpatrick off of turn number four and then drove it too deep into the first turn, slid up the track, and Fitzpatrick made the pass anyhow. Good battle back there with Fitzpatrick going at it with Gemmel, Gannett. Larry Jackson, I believe, is he a lap down or did he get his lap back? Larry Jackson is a lap, lap down. down. He's in the free pass spot running in the 12th position. So if the yellow comes out, he would be the next car to get back on the lead lap. 35 laps left to go. Trade and Lapsovich out in front of DJ Kennington. As they go down the back stretch another time. Here's Andrew Ranger still working all over the back bumper. Cole Powell. Cole's probably thinking, why did I pass him? Why not just stay behind him and put the pressure on him? Yeah, but you don't want Ranger to get by it because then it's Kevin LaCroix that's going to fill your rear fin here. And he's equally as tenacious as Andrew Ranger. So Cole Powell doing a nice job. Not a series regularly. NASCAR Penty Series holding on to a top three right now. And here comes Ranger trying to make the run the inside of him. Ranger up the inside into turn number one. Keeps that car pinned to the bottom. There was just not a lot of grip up the outside of turn two. Cole Powell just could not keep pace with the 51 of Ranger, but he did get back to the racing groove before Kevin Lacroix could take it in. Yeah, so Lacroix has to stay tucked in line. He's got Dumoulin right behind him. Shea Gemmel trying to regroup and uh, gain back the ground that he just lost from those drivers. Gemmel and Fitzpatrick closing in on a four-car battle for third. It could be a six-car battle for that third spot because first and second are not up for grabs right now. Trayton Lapsovich has the lead, DJ Kennington. He's keeping pace for the most part. Kennington losing less than a car length every lap, but they have driven away from Andrew Ranger in third. Yeah, it's been a two-car race so far in this one between Lapsovich and Kennington. They've got some clear sailing, a bit of driving before they get to the first lap traffic in their windshields. But the battle right now is from third on back, separating himself from Powell right now and Powell has got Kevin Lacroix right behind him. Jake Emmel looks as though he's faster than the 47 of LP Doom and he keeps coming off the corner and sticking a nose to the inside I think just to show the 47 of Doom hey I want to make a move if you want to move over and let me go that would be super. Gemmel gave away those spots but now catches his breath gets back to work and trying to get back by those cars. It's been a long night for Shea Gemmel, but a rewarding one the way he, the car has been handling. I think he's got to be happy heading into the remaining two races this weekend as well. You would think so. so LP Dumoulin, the 47, the brake rotor glowing in that sixth position, trying to keep Shea Gemmel behind him. J.R. Fitzpatrick closing in on that battle. Further back, there might be a problem for Brett Taylor in the number three. He is dropping a lot of spots very quickly on the front stretch. TJ Renamato gave the leaders a bit of an uh oh moment there in corner number two. He got all sorts of sideways through the corner right in front of Trayton Lapsovich and DJ Kennington, but he woke up enough to let the leaders go by, held on to the car. Nice job by Renamato. You know, that's why the race is never over. You never know when the next pucker up moment is going to come. As Drayton Lasher is now pulling away just a little bit from DJ Kennington in the 17. 
Drives to the inside of Malcolm Strong in one and two. And now we watch that battle for the third spot continue on. Well, Andrew Ranger has the third spot with a bit of a gap back to Cole Powell, but Kevin LaCroix is really starting to turn up the heat. Now these three cars very evenly matched tonight. We documented a number of times Andrew Ranger and Cole Powell, the battle they've had back and forth. But Kevin LaCroix has matched them right now as he's right on the back. The deck lid of the 36 of Cole Powell heading down the back stretch into corner number three. They close quickly on TJ Renamato in that number two. Renamato up the racetrack. They'll drive to the inside of that number two. Have little problem getting by. Kevin Lacroix going to do the same. And they'll resume that battle for the third spot. We are less than 25 laps from the finish. It'll be 22 laps this time when Trayton Lapsovich crosses the line. DJ Kennington's keeping him in sight. He's not that far off the back bumper, the number 20. And he knows the laps are winding down. So if he's kind of ridden around these last few laps and saved his car, it's time to get up on that horse and use what he's got left. DJ Kennington has won a lot of races here at Delaware Speedway over the years. Trayton Lapsovich has not won any races here. Well, I shouldn't say he hasn't won any, but not in the late level. Four to three and four. Not traffic in it. But still, all three laps of it in the number 20, but 20 lap. Hello. All those Sam Fellows down into three and four. A look to the inside of the Fellows number 98 on the front straightaway and Fellows gives lots of room down to the inside. Lapsovich goes by now DJ Kennington will close in. I'll tell you Sam Fellows as a rookie in this series has shown a ton of respect for his competitors. It's been fun to watch him learn his craft. Of course his father Ron Fellows uh, is his spotter at these races. So Ron Fellows on the radio with Sam Fellows giving him some pointers and giving him all the information he needs. That's a wealth of information right there. I'm sure a lot of drivers would love to have that uh, mind of racing in their ear while they're competing out on the track. He's done a thing or two. We watch them work off a of turn four down the front straightaway and now back to the race leader Trayton Lapsovich. Kennington, if he's not closing the gap, then I'm crazy. He is closing the gap on race leader Trayton Lapsovich here. I think you're still crazy, though. That's it's a bit of both. Yeah. <laughs> a little column A, a little column B. Well, what's coming into play here, though, there's enough laps left that they're catching the back end of the field right now. Brett Taylor's right in front of them and some good, fast cars that could still play a part in how this race ends. And cars that will not want to go a lap down. I mean, Brett Taylor in that number three got back on the lead lap. He's going to fight to stay on the lead lap. It's not their job to move over and get out of the way of the race leader. It is their job to hold a steady line, a predictable line if the leaders are coming. 14 laps left to go this time by as Trayton Lapsovich works it off the corner, but there's the pack of cars right in front of him. Brett Taylor on the outside line. Got Rina Motto in his lane and Tank Leani also on the outside. This is a precarious spot. Get pretty crowded down there in a hurry down in turn number three. Lapsovich maintains his position ahead of DJ Kennington, gets to the inside of Brett Taylor, and Taylor was squeezing him down the racetrack all the way down the front stretch in that number three. Wow, close call racing there for the top two. Kennington keeps pace. Does a nice job getting by Taylor as the laps wind down. They close in now on Alex Tagliani. Tagliani, multiple laps. Oh, trouble. TJ Rinomato goes around in turn number two. And this, as they say, changes everything. That it does. Everyone gets a chance to catch their breath just as the leaders were starting to work through the lap traffic. A couple of close calls there. Renamato just went down into the corner and a little too much rear brake spun it around. The car slides down out of harm's way. 
I think if you're Trayton Lapsovich or if you're DJ Cannington, you're not terribly concerned about this yellow because it will give you open racetrack when we go back to green. But restarts jumble up the field. Everybody from second back to 11th or 12th. Unofficially, I believe Larry Jackson will get the free pass to get back on the lead lap. It's a three of Brett Taylor. It's called a trapped car. So if you watch NASCAR Touring Series on, on TSN on Sunday, they have scoring loops all around the racetrack. So they, they can score the race in live time. We only have a scoring loop at the front stretch, right around the start finish line. So to be fair, they go back to the last completed lap. And that's how they set the race order. So because Brett Taylor got lapped on that last completed lap, he actually gets sent around the leader to the tail of the field and then they designate who gets the free pass being the front running car one lap down. Clear as mud, right? Don't forget one year ago, DJ Cannington at Jucasa Motor Speedway broke a bit of a drought and won the fall brawl at JMS and uh, got the monkey off his back. And now he's in a position here in the final weekend of the year Get back to victory lane, but he's got to get by Trayton Lapsovich. And there goes Larry Jackson to the outside of the leader, so he will be the free pass. DJ Kennington wants to win something fierce. At the same time, he knows what it takes to win a championship, and he knows Alex Tagliani is not having a good night. So he won't make that ultimate sacrifice. He's not going to risk that, I don't think, to try and win this race. But he'll restart right alongside that number 20. To pit road, J.R. Fitzpatrick, T.J. Renamato. Well, guys, Fitzpatrick pulls in with Renamato right behind him. They go to work on the right side of the Fitzpatrick car. But before they do that, they have to push him back a bit. He's got to get into the box. And they get that car in there. And now they're going to work slightly on the right side. Behind there, Rinomoto, they're making a left rear pressure adjustment on the two car guys. And that looks like all they've done to that number two car. Fitzpatrick and Rinomoto both down and away. Yeah, it looked like they were either working on the MSD box or the shifter in the 64 or J.R. Fitzpatrick. There's not much else you can access through the passenger side window. And I'm pretty sure that's the second time I've seen him in and that work being done with a crew member inside the window. I might be wrong on that, but uh, I think that's the second time they've been in there. And one of the crew members had the duct tape out, so interesting to, to find out what exactly is going on for J.R. Fitzpatrick inside the 64. There's also a huge difference in size between Mark Dilley, who was supposed to drive that race car here tonight, and J.R. Fitzpatrick, who is well over six feet tall. So, Well, guys, it was an interior panard bar adjustment is the reason they were climbing in that window. That's what the crew's telling us, panard bar adjustment on the Fitzpatrick 64. Well, there you go. All of that speculating for nothing, Greg. <laughs> it sounded good, though. I appreciate that, Clint. One to go, so Larry Jackson will get his lap back. Unofficially, he's running in the 12th position, so 12 cars on the lead lap. The field doubles up. Dexter Stacy's made a nice comeback in that number 92 machine as he heads up to the outside of the fourth row for this restart. J.R. Fitzpatrick, even though he was in the pits, gets to restart with the lead lap car, so he's up there in the 10th spot in that 64 machine. Larry Jackson, so Larry must be 11th. No, Brett Taylor's a lead lap car as well. Five cars in the top six are all in the championship chase right now. The one wild card, that black and yellow, number 36 of Cole Powell. Let's see what he does on this restart. Lapsovich with a good launch. Andrew Ranger also with a good start on the inside. Wow, we had cars sideways off of turn number two. Through three and four they come. Here's Ranger down to the inside of DJ Kennington. They'll go door to door down the front stretch. Kennington will have the spot. He'll try and tuck in line and get ahead of Ranger. He'll do that down in corner one. 
four laps to go. It'll be three next time at the strike. DJ Kennington did not need to lose that ground on the restart. He's got some making up to do as he sails it down into three and four. It'll be three laps to go. Did a nice job and closed the gap on leader Drayton Lapsovich. He'll go down into corner number one. Let's see if he can close it even more. But right now the youngster is sure and steady as he sails it down the back stretch. Drayton Lapsovich, I think, is a little bit better in one and two, but DJ Kennington is better exiting the second turn and getting through three and four. Drayton Lapsovich got sideways, defended the inside of the racetrack. Look at Kennington and Ranger right there with two to go. What has been a two-car race for most of this event now has got three right there at the front, and Kevin Lacroix is waiting for some sort of calamity to take place, and he's ready to pounce. It's, it's happened before. It could happen again. White flag in the air one more time around. Lost it. It's a car like the head of Kennington. The youngster leads down in one and two. Kennington all over his back bumper. They'll sail it down the back stretch one more time. Last time into three and four. If DJ Kennington's going to win, it might require some bumper. There it is. Kennington to the back of Lapsovich through turn number four. The bump and run executed to perfection. Kennington with the win. Lapsovich second. Ranger third. Kevin Lacroix fourth. Cole Powell hangs on to fifth. Oh, boy. That close. Here it is again. Down into three and four. Just that tap on Trayton Lapsovich going into three. And Kennington squirts by the inside. Oh, dear. That's what you came to see. <laughs> That's why you tune in. That's why the fans come to watch. The Castro Edge crew, they are some pumped up, jumping over the wall. For their driver, DJ Kennington, Trayton Lapsovich is out of the car, being told by an official they don't want him there. He's telling the official, oh, and Trayton Lapsovich, He's not happy. I think he could have run around him quicker than that. <laughs> Trayton Lapsovich not happy as he walks away. Around to the passenger side of that number 20, hangs the helmet up. Someone coming out onto the track with that Lapsovich number 20. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah. <laughs> That's Ryden Lapsovich. I was wondering why you were questioning. You, you don't contain the Ryden Lapsovich. <laughs> he, is, he is the boisterous Lapsovich. It, it was a well-executed bump and run. If I'm Trayton Lapsovich, I'm very upset. I don't like what happened. Let's look at this again down into three. The strange thing is, it, all, it almost looked like Lapsovich left a little bit of room on the inside there. But regardless, DJ Kennington took the victory. So, folks, I'm not sure. And Clinton Jeffrey, you might have to help me out with this. Are we sticking around for victory lane? Okay, so Todd Lewis has been handed the microphone for Victory Lane, so we are going to see DJ Kennington and hear from him and his post-race thoughts. I wait for DJ to get the gear off. The crew, Ted McAllister, and the rest of the gang anxiously awaiting their driver. He can hear you now, folks. How about a big round of applause for DJ Kennington? He's got the race winner's cap on. He's hopping out of that number 17 Castrol Edge Dodge. And DJ Kennington is celebrating victory for the first time in 2021. The confetti flies and it's high fives for his Castrol team here in victory lane.
Tariq Lavsevich came to offer congratulations, we'll say, to DJ Kennington, but what a race. You had a fast car all day long, and you showed it off here at the end with a move to take the victory. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the car was good. Trayton was a little better than us in the middle of the race there, but, uh, I mean, he left the door open going in the bottom of three. I stuffed it in there. He tried to shut the door, and, I mean, uh, obviously there was contact, but... I wasn't trying to wreck him. He's a good kid, and he's going to win a lot of these races. We know that. But uh, this Castro Edge Dodge, uh, Spark Power, Castro, Brian Cathcart, uh, Will Ride Transport, Country Collision, uh, everybody that helps us, thank you. It's uh, good to be home at Delaware. I'd like to see this place full. That's awesome. And we got a lot more racing to do on Sunday. DJ Kennington taking advantage of the home cooking here at Delaware. And, and I, Greg, I... I commend both of those drivers. Trayton Lapsovich, good for him for saying his piece. He didn't go in there fist first. He went in there to say his piece. DJ Kennington said his. Two different drivers with two different viewpoints, and they're both absolutely right. We got two more races to go on Sunday, and uh, it's a great storyline. Ultimately, both of those drivers gained a lot of points today. Uh, Spencer, do we have a rundown? All right, folks, from Delaware Speedway, that's going to do it for our Friday night program. The Canadian Tire 125, tune in Sunday. We've got two races to go in the 2021 NASCAR Pinty Series schedule. Lots of racing all weekend long here at Delaware Speedway. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. That's all we've got for Clinton, Jeffrey, Greg Callen, Jamie Mosley, and Jordan Mosley. I'm Adam Ross saying so long from Delaware Speedway.